Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Before we get started today, I wanted to let everybody know that we started the Symphony POS private Facebook group. This is a free group that everybody can join. So click the link in the description below to join the group and talk to your fellow colleagues about the Symphony POS system and hospitality in general. And with that short announcement out of the way, let's get into today's video. I had a request to talk about some advanced tender keys. So today we're going to discuss about hold and fire, send and stay, and print seat check. And I'll show you how to program them if you ever need to use them. So let's start with hold and fire. Let me show you how this functionality works. I'm going to begin a fast transaction for two guests and I'm going to enter an appetizer for seat position one, another appetizer for seat position two, and let's say that I already know what their entrees are going to be. So I'm going to go to my entrees section and order the beef sliders for seat position one and the scallops entree for seat position two. Now, in many restaurants, the chefs would like to know the appetizers and entrees from the beginning. So a lot of times they would add like a line here just to differentiate the two and you would send it like this to, get to the kitchen the way it is. But in some situations, you just want to send the appetizers by themselves and you would just write it up on a piece of paper for the entrees and then add them later. But if we use the hold function, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is select this entree and then I have a hold button here and then I select the second entree and I click hold. So now you see these two little H's next to the items, which means those two items are held. So now if I hit the send key, you see I have a little H here next to the check and if I take a look at it, I get two stars next to the appetizers, which means they were sent to the kitchen and the entrees have two H's. So once the appetizers are out and the guests are ready for their main courses, I can simply select the item again and just press the H button and then press the H button for the second entree. And now you would see the little H transformed into a star and the main courses will be printed in the kitchen. So let's take a look at how we would program that. So here we are in EMC and the first thing we need to do is we need to add the button to the screen itself if you don't already have it. So I'm going to select page design here in the configuration tab and I'm going to open my transactions page. I'm going to switch the aspect ratio to 16 to 9 to match my widescreen workstations and I added my whole button here between the send and the print. So let's say you want to add one of these buttons. What I usually do is I change the size to make sure I have enough space. If you right click there and hit change size, you see I have a row of one because I only have one row of buttons here at the bottom and there's 12 columns. That means there's no space for an extra one. So to fix that, all I have to do is switch to 13 columns and then hit OK. And now I have an extra space. Now you might have this set up like I do where each button takes up one of their squares or it might be that you have many squares available. So all you have to do is kind of make these buttons a little bit smaller. So the fastest way to add one of these buttons is to copy an existing one. So let's say I'm going to copy the one right next to it. All I have to do is right click on it and select copy and then right click here and select paste. So you see now this one moved over the button next to it. So all I have to do is drag it into its position. So now after we have this selected, the first thing I'll do is change its color just to kind of make it stand out for the colors right next to it. So I can make it this knife olive color. So that's going to be different from my print and the button next to it. And then to program it right now, it's set up to print the check. I'm going to select from the drop down here and I'm going to set it up as a function. The function is all the way at the top. And then you're going to have this edit command screen open. And what I'm going to do in this search bar, I'm going to type in hold. And now I have two results. I have transaction hold and regular hold. So select hold and then click OK. Now the function itself is hold, but as you can see, the legend still says print. So this button still says print. So you can just erase that and type in hold or you can click the generate legend key and it will auto populate whatever the name of the function is right here. So now you have your hold button. All you have to do is save. After adding the hold button, there is one more step we have to do in order to ensure it works properly. And that has to do with the tender media. So I'm going to go back to my home page 
and I'm gonna select Tender Media. It's also in the configuration screen here under the sales items. In my Tender Media, I have to change the send key. So I'm gonna go to the Media Key section. I'm gonna double click the rectangle here at the end of the send key. And now I see everything in form view. Then we're gonna have to go to the options area and then you'll see several tabs here as well. I'm gonna go to the ops behavior section and then here I'll take a look at the tender media hold types. Most of the time this is just gonna be set to fire order. So what you're gonna have to do is change the send key to keep held status. So take a look at this one here and change it to one. If you have a send and stay, you'll also wanna change it to one and also for the print check, you're gonna to wanna to change it to one. After you make these changes, go ahead and save. And speaking of the send and stay, let's take a look at that next. So we're back at the workstation and as I just said before, let's take a look at the send and stay functionality. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in and begin a fast transaction for two guests. So the send and stay is really helpful when you wanna send something without actually exiting the screen. This is particularly helpful, for example, when entering drinks. Let's say that we have a whole order for a table where we know what they're gonna have for drinks and we also know what their appetizers are gonna be. So I'm gonna go to my drinks and then let's take a look at some cocktails. So for our classic cocktails, let's say that somebody will want a Bellini and then we also have a chocolate martini. So chocolate martinis can take a little while to make so the server will know that and it's good practice to send the drinks so the bartender starts making them anyway, even if it's a really easy to make drink like opening a beer or something. So instead of me going to the food section and start it entering the appetizers, what I'm gonna do after I enter my drinks, it is hit send and stay. So as I hit send and stay, you see I have my little arrows here. So the bartender ticket already printed and the bartender already started on my drinks. So as I'm going through my appetizers, I enter for seat position one. Maybe the guest will want something particular regarding their appetizer. So I might have to go to the food prep and type a special. And then I have to go back to my appetizer and enter the second one. And maybe I need to add special instructions for this one as well. And this all eats up some time. So after I do all of my appetizers and I enter all the special conditions that I need, after I hit send, it's highly likely that my drinks are pretty much already or they're about to be ready. So it's really good to send the drinks first so the bartender has a chance to make them and then you can just go pick up the drinks and deliver them to the table. It speeds up service and it offers a better customer experience. So I always recommend implementing the send and stay functionality and training the servers how to use it. So let's take a look at EMC on how we would program it. So here we are back in EMC taking a look at the configuration and very conveniently we're already in the tender media section. Uh, if you're not in the tender media, remember you can just go to the configuration tab and click on tender media. So what we're gonna do is copy the send key functionality. Like everybody will have the send functionality. So all we have to do is create the send and stay. And instead of adding each option one by one, we're just gonna copy it or use it as a template. So I want my send and stay to go to position 610. So that's gonna be here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna check this box to use a template. And then I'm gonna select the send key. So it's gonna make an exact copy of the send key. And all I have to do is make a small change. And I'm gonna name this send and stay and I'll add a two because I already have a send and stay and the system will not let me enter two of them. So I'm just doing this for uh, exemplification purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So now I have a copy of my send key and it's named send and stay. So if we take a look at the general tab, it is a service total key as expected. The only thing that I need to change here is in the options area. And then I have to go to the ops behavior and check on box number 95. Now, if I right click on option number 95, I'm gonna see a quick description of what this option does. So it says select to allow a server to post and send current round entries to remote order devices without exiting the check. So that's exactly what we wanted to do. And that's why we're checking option number 95. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. 
and we're gonna have to go and of course add it in page design so the button is visible on the screen. So I do have page design open here. Now, because I did add a new key and the page design tab was already open, what I need to do is actually close it and reopen it. So it actually acknowledges that a new tender media key was added. So I'm gonna reopen my transactions area, go to my 16 to nine aspect ratio. And just as with the other button, what I need to do is I need to make a copy. So I would select the send key right click on it, copy, and then right click here. And then all I have to do is paste. So now I have an exact copy, I'm going to move it to where I want it to be. Let me actually delete this one first. So I get it out of the way. So now I have two sin keys when I pasted it, they just kind of went one on top of the other. So they're going to do that, you're going to have to move it to the location that you need it to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color slightly so I can make it a little lighter green. And then here from the tender media, it's already selected as a tender media type, but it still does just send. So I'm going to click the little arrow and then I'm going to go all the way to the bottom where I have my new one selected, the send and stay. And all I have to do is click OK. And as with the other one, we're going to generate legend and I'm going to erase the little two from there. So I'm just going to name it send and stay and then go ahead and save my screen. And that is how you add a send and stay key. And we're back at the workstation. And the final function that we're going to talk about is print seat check. Now, this will only apply if you are using seat positions in your restaurant. And it's particularly helpful if you have larger tables and especially when they require split checks. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in and I'm going to open up my check. And here I only have two seat positions. And if they say, can we have separate checks? It's not going to be very difficult just to split it. But if you have a table of seven or eight and everything is entered correctly in their seat positions, all you would have to do is you would go to your functions area and you just print the seat checks. So that will print separate checks for everybody just by using one key instead of sitting there and just splitting everything off as needed. So let's take a look at how we would program this key. And we're back in EMC in the tender media section. So in this case, we're going to do something similar to what we did with the send and stay, but this time we're going to use the print check key. So we do have a print check and most restaurants do have this key uh, because it's vital. So if we take a look at the general section, if you want to see the option bits that I have selected, the key type is service total in the option section. If we take a look at the printing options, I have 20, 21 and 22, nothing in the credit card or taxing options for ops behavior. The only thing different I have that the whole type is keep held status and in miscellaneous, I don't have anything. For the menu levels, make sure it's available on all menu levels so the key can be used all the time. And I don't have anything in output or in effectivity groups. So that's how I have mine programmed. Now, what I'm gonna do is, like I said, just with the send and stay, I'm gonna select the print check key. I'm gonna click insert. And then I'm gonna add my print C check to position 611, which is gonna be just here below my send and stay. And again, I'm going to use the template because I want all the options selected from the print check. And I'm going to name this print seat check with a two again, because I already have the one and then click OK. And now I got an exact copy of my print check key. So really the only difference with the print C check is option bit number 14. And that is in the options area printing options. So all you have to do besides 2021 20, and 22 is also select option bit 14 and then save. Now, remember, just as with the send and stay, you will need to add this to the screen. So whatever you feel like this is needed for us, we don't use it that often. So that's why I don't have it on the bottom bar. So what I did is I added it in the functions area for the employees. So when they need to hit it, they just hit it there. I would have added it here, but this one is already kind of crowded. So I didn't need it uh, necessarily here. So to add it, it's the same as the other one. Simply find the button that is very similar to it. Copy it, paste it in place, 
adjust it for size, for color, and then simply change the tender media to the key that you added. And as you can see, key number 611 is not here, which is that print seat check two that I added. And this, the reason is exactly what I mentioned earlier, because I didn't close page design and open it up again. It didn't acknowledge that a new tender media was added. So that's why I don't see it here. So make sure you do close page design and reopen it. And that's it for today's video. Remember to check out our free Facebook group in the description below, join and talk to your fellow colleagues and ask any Symfony questions you might have. We actually have a few members that are experts in Res and E7. So if you have questions about Res or E7, they might be able to help you out. And let me know in the comments below what other topics you would want me to cover in future videos. Leave this video a big thumbs up and I'll see everybody again next time.